Downtown Sports Center. The good news is the BCS picture got a little clearer, at least for a while. And that could mean bad news for some of the teams involved. Good news, you'll see if the Flames could make toast of the Coyotes. Bad news, you'll have to provide the jam. Good news, you'll see if UConn could hold on to its number one ranking. You'll also see if the Tar Heels got some bad news. Good news, we'll provide you with reading materials on this flight. But the bad news is no pets allowed. On SportsCenter, next. Hi there and welcome. Thanks a lot for dropping in on Sports Center after a very busy Saturday. Seated right next to Dave Revson. I'm Whit Watson. That is us. Couple upsets in college hoops. Couple AL teams shuffle their first baseman around and a near tragedy at Veterans Stadium. But first, the vast improvement that is the BCS. Indeed. You know, at its core, the Bowl Championship Series is an attempt to quantify that which cannot be quantified. In that mathematical spirit, consider this. Since November 24, 1979, the Miami Hurricanes have lost 12 games by 20 points or more, including last weekend's 66-13 pounding from Syracuse. After each of those first 11 20-point losses, the Hurricanes came back to win their next game. Their next game after Syracuse in 1998, the third-ranked Bruins of UCLA in search of a perfect season and a spot in the BCS championship game. You want numbers, them are numbers. This the rematch, the Hurricane Bowl, after the game was delayed September 26th, and Miami dominating the ground all day long. Edgerin James breaks off a 45-yard touchdown run down the left side. 7-0 Miami. UCLA wasting no time. Cade McNown, the play action, finding two-time national volleyball champion Danny Farmer for a 77-yard touchdown, a 7-7 game. Miami, deep inside UCLA territory, coming right back. Nobody covering Aaron Mosher. Easy four-yard score, 14-7 Miami leads. Nick Aliotti, the defensive coach, cannot believe it. Second quarter, Bruins down 14-7. McNown, the screen pass to Jermaine Lewis. Great downfield block from Danny Farmer. Down to the 15-yard line. It's the Danny Farmer show. Three plays later, third and goal, McNown. Rolling left, getting chased towards the sideline just before he goes out of bounds. He fires the touchdown pass to Brian Foley Dixon. We are tied at 14, McNown pumped. In Tucson, the Arizona Wildcats love it because a UCLA win could ensure them their first Rose Bowl appearance ever. Watch McNown's effort again as he's falling down, being chased out of bounds, gets the pass off. Miami would come right back. Edger and James, two huge blocks ahead of him, 10-yard touchdown, a huge day for him. More on that later. 21-14 Miami, 21-17 Bruins down at the break. Bob Toledo turns the reins over to McNown. Third and goal to 14. McNown in the pocket, looking for who else but Danny Farmer. 24-21 UCLA. After a three and out for Miami, first play for UCLA, play action. Brian Poley Dixon, touchdown. 31-21 UCLA and the Cats in Tucson, loving it. They smell roses. UCLA again, the quick strike offense. McNown looking for Brad Melsby. Oh, there he is. 59-yard touchdown, 38-21 UCLA. Miami, of course, staying on the ground with Edgerin James. Going left, breaking some more tackles, a 12-yard gain. But Miami wouldn't go to him all the time. Instead, two plays later, how about Najay Davenport breaking some tackles of his own for a 23-yard score. 38-28 UCLA, Bob Toledo in disbelief. After a UCLA fumble deep in Miami territory, Scott Covington, play action, looking deep. How about Santana Moss? 71-yard touchdown, 38-35 UCLA. The Hurricanes within three at the Orange Bowl. UCLA up 45-35. Watch the tight end, Montreal Fulcher on the end, and safety Ryan Rock. Now Rock bites hard on the play action. Fulcher wide open for the 29-yard score. Good use of the spot shadow. The Miami run sets up the pass, which Davis saying, that's how I scripted it. Cade McNown and the Bruins, a three-point lead. It's over 3.30 left. McNown looking for Melsby again. He eludes a tackler and is brought down after a long gain. Back in Tucson, Arizona digging it. But wait! The ball came loose. After a short conference, the officials award the football to Miami. 
The Arizonans in disbelief. They thought Melsby was down. Let's all watch it again together, slowly. The knee hits the ground. It appears Melsby still had the ball. Regardless, it's a fumble. Miami loves it. Bob Toledo hates it. Third and six for Miami. A completion to Andre King on the sideline, who does a little dance and makes a little love for the UCLA bench. That's a first down. Four plays later, swing pass to Nick Williams. Ruled out at the one-yard line. Didn't matter. On the very next play, Edgerin James walks in for the touchdown. 49-45 Miami. Cade McNown in disbelief. Scott Covington, believe it. McNown takes the field at his own 45-yard line. 42 seconds to go, down by four. Short pass to Melsby. Quick lateral to Deshaun Foster. Steps out of bounds. Second and seven from the Miami 30. 11 seconds left. McNown nearly sacked. Fires. Almost picked off by Dan Morgan. UCLA watching their season flash in front of their eyes. Ball to 30 still. Four seconds left. McNown into the end zone. Looking for six foot five backup quarterback Drew Bennett. Too long. Incomplete. Butch Davis. Maybe the biggest win of his coaching career at Miami. The Wildcats, meanwhile, back in Arizona, have to wait one more year for their first Rose Bowl appearance. At the Big 12 title game, the K-State fans see it, and they love it. McNown, 26 of 35, a school record, 513 yards, five touchdowns, and a rushing TD. And Edger and James, a monster day as Miami upsets UCLA, 49 to 45. James went ballistic, 39 carries, 299 yards, and three scores offsetting that school record from the Bruins, K. McNown, 513 yards passing, and UCLA's national title hopes perhaps dashed, along with their 20-game winning streak. Well, it's disappointing. I don't know if it's emotionally crushing. Uh, you know, we'll live to play another game. It, it is a game, okay? And our kids gave a, as good effort as they could possibly give. We just weren't good enough defensively to stop Miami. Great courage by this group of kids for 10 months. I've never been so proud of a group of guys the way they fought through adversity all year long. This game, what a great job our guys did today. I'm proud of every one of them. It hurts. I mean, I hate to see all these guys go out this way. And, I, you know, I don't like to go out you know, of a, of a national championship race this way, but, uh, you know, just my hat is off to the Miami offense. Do you realize what you've done here? You may not have been playing for the national title, but you just decided it for everybody. This is great. We ruined a lot of people's New Year's. So the Bruins' 20-game win streak was ended by an unranked Miami team. Since 1972, only two longer win streaks have been ended by unranked opponents. The longest streak of all time, 47 games by Oklahoma, was ended by unranked Notre Dame back in 1957. So UCLA's lost a chance to bail out the BCS. All we needed were wins by Kansas State and Tennessee to set up that battle of the unbeatens that everyone's looking